Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combat tutorial video, and this time it's going to be another World Chalice combat tutorial with the new sort of tech option of Planet Pathfinder, searching Kyoto Waterfront from your deck without having to rely on drawing the card, thus meaning Gamma Seal is a much more consistent boss monster for our deck to work for. But so, in the video that I put up a couple days ago, I showed you Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice that drew two off Ningirsu, searched Kyoto Waterfront from our deck, put Gamma Seal on the board and ended with a live Firewall Dragon for a few disruptions. Two off the Gamma Seal and one off of the live Firewall. What I'm going to be showing you is a variation of that combo, another two card combo, Venus plus Brilliant Fusion. And this is personally my favorite version of the combo sequence with any of these two card combos because anytime Brilliant Fusion gets involved, especially with Eva in the mix, you start getting a lot of extra cards thrown in for literally no reason, which means that this combo is going to yield you a lot more resources to be you know, messing around with over any of the other iterations. And specifically, this one's cool because since we're summoning Pathfinder off Summon Source, you don't get to access Eva, but Brilliant Fusion fills that gap, meaning that this combo is going to end with a Search Kyoto Waterfront. We're going to draw too often Girsu again. We're not going to end on a live Firewall, although we are going to use Firewall twice, and we are going to end on Herald of the Orange Light plus Eva in our hand, which only further fuels the amount of negation Gamma Seal can do because Herald of Orange Light destroys a monster on the field in most cases, putting more counters on Waterfront. But at bare minimum, this is a four total destroy disruption board because Herald of the Orange Light plus Eva means you have two Herald of Orange Lights in hand because you'll ditch Eva with the first Herald and then Eva on your opponent's turn will search Herald and Lee which means that's another live Herald and then you've got the Gamma Seal with the Kyoto with five counters on it so I'm going to show you how to do that right here but if you like this video be sure to leave a like and leave a comment down below leaving feedback and suggestions and all that stuff and if you're new here consider subscribing if you haven't already and check out the channel if you want to see more videos like this because I do combo tutorials on a bunch of other decks but with that out of the way let us not waste any more time and start doing this. So, you're going to normal summon Venus, obviously, and you're going to get all three of your Shine Balls out of your deck. Now, the reason I'm doing this on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro this time, whereas the last one was a live combo tutorial, was because uh, my webcam is mounted for when I'm doing streaming, and I didn't want to move it, then immediately move it back, just for the sake of doing something with live cards when I could just set up a Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro uh, client tell to do this for me. But so, after you get all three Shine Balls out of your deck, you're going to link into Link Spider, and then you are going to link into any Link 2 that has at least one sideways pointing arrow. In this instance, I'm going to be using Nightmare Phoenix because that is what's in my extra deck. But if you had Proxy Dragon or Binary Sorceress or whatever, those are applicable here as well. You could also be working on the other side of the board and use Nightmare Cerberus. I have Phoenix and Cerberus in my extra deck. I prefer to use Cerberus as the latter option and use Phoenix earlier because it's more expendable, but that's just my own personal preference. But so, the entire reason you're doing this is to open up a zone over here so that you can activate this Brilliant Fusion. And we've got Fairies in the Grave, so that's good. So we're gonna send the Garnet, and we're going to send the Eva from our deck to the Grave to summon Seraph Knight in this center monster zone. And then the Eva is going to trigger its effect, and we have a Venus in Grave and a Shine Ball in Grave that we can banish. If you had, like, Lazuli in your deck as your Gym Knight, uh, fusion, your Brilliant Fusion uh, target instead of Garnet, you could send that and then add Shine Ball to your hand, and that's even further plussing. So, things to consider. Garnet's usually the safer bet, though. But so, off of this, you're going to add Herald, and you're going to add Lee to your hand. So, we've already got a lot of things to our name off of just these two cards, right? So, now what we're going to do from here is we're going to link away with the Link Spider and the Nightmare Phoenix, just to clear them into Reprodocus over here on top of this Mystical Shine Ball. And then what we're going to do is immediately turn that Shine Ball, because it is a vanilla, into Emduk. So what we need to do is summon this Lee out of our hand without using our additional normal summon. But we do have the Seraph Knight on, this, on the field here, so we do have the additional normal summon at our disposal. So that's pretty much what we're going to be going for. But So you're going to use Reprodoxus Effect, changing the type of your Emduk into a Dinosaur allowing you to go into Summon Sorceress. So you're going to go into Summon Sorceress with Reprodocus and the Emduk. Summon Sorceress gets put over here. And you're going to use Emduk's effect from Grave. You are not going to use Summon Sorceress's effect unless you really want to for some reason. But mainly you're going to be summoning Lee to your field in one of these zones that doesn't necessarily matter. You just don't want it to be in either of your Summon Source arrows. But so then Lee's going to trigger its effect. You're going to search for World Legacy World Chalice. We have the Seraph Knight on the field for a normal summon, so we are going to perform it. So, I'm going to attribute the Seraph Knight to Normal Summon World Legacy World Chalice. I always put it in either the farthest right or farthest left hand zone, depending on what side of the field you're working on. Wherever you're going to be making Firewall, I put it on the far right or far left, because we want Pathfinder to be linked away with first, uh, and we want this zone next to Firewall to be open, right? 
But so what we're going to do is we're going to use Summon Sorceress, targeting the World Legacy World Chalice, summoning Planet Pathfinder from our deck to our center monster zone. Now its effect is negated, so if we were to tribute it right now to try and activate its effect, its effect would still be negated, meaning we would not search Waterfront, but that's completely fine. This combo actually works a little bit better in the regard in regards to the previous one, because you're capable of making Eeb right here because you have this Lee left over. In the previous combo, you had two machines here, you couldn't make Eeb, but now you can just make Eeb straight up. And so, we're not going to use the World Legacy World Chalice effect, we don't want to send our own cards to Grave. And what we're going to do is we're going to make Firewall Dragon with Summon Source and the World Legacy World Chalice next to the Eeb. So now World Legacy World Chalice's effect is going to trigger, and we're going to summon two from our deck. So you're going to summon Guard Dragon, and then either another Lee or like a World Chalice Vanilla if you're playing it, or another Guard Dragon, whatever. The only thing that matters is you put Guard Dragon next to Firewall, and then you put the Vanilla or the other Guard Dragon just in one of these two zones. It doesn't necessarily matter. Technically, this one is probably a bit more safe, but it does not matter for this combo sequence. But so now, what we're going to do is we're going to link the Guard Dragon away into Link Karibo. We're going to trigger Firewall Dragon's effect to Special Summon because we do legally have a monster in our hand, the Herald of Orange Light. And then we're going to chain Firewall Dragon's effect to Bounce too, just like we did previously in the other combo sequence. So we're going to Bounce, Planet Pathfinder, and we are going to Bounce World Legacy World Chalice to our hand. This is going to be put into our hand, and then we're going to Special the Planet Pathfinder next to Firewall. Then you're going to Tribute the Planet Pathfinder, and you're going to add the Kyoto Waterfront. So we've accessed the Kyoto Waterfront, which means we can start getting counters on it, we can start doing shit to get Gamma Seal online, right? Now, this is the point where if you had another monster in your hand, you can actually turn this entire play into a Ningirsu draw 3 instead of a draw 2, because you have a Firewall Dragon special here that we're not actually going to use. We're not going to use this Firewall Dragon special, but if you had another monster in your hand that wasn't like the Herald of Orange Light and your other three cards, you could special it here, make another Link 2, Guard Dragon, bring back your, uh, make a Link 2 with the Link Kribo and it, this goes into Mduk, Guard Dragon brings back for another Mduk, and then you have a three card in Gearsu draw, and you have the same results overall, you just have an extra card that you've drawn and rotated a monster out of your hand for, so things to consider, but that's not what we're focusing on here, so Firewall Dragon is not going to trigger here, and we're going to activate Kyoto Waterfront to start getting counters on it, and what we're going to do is we're going to clear the, uh, the Link Karibo, we, yes, yes, we need to clear the Link Karibo, well, technically, we don't need to clear the Link Karibo, but we're going to clear the Link Karibo because we do need a Link 2 to make uh, to make the uh, to make the Ningirsu, right? So from here, Firewall is not going to trigger again. We have the Guard Dragon that we want to utilize. So we're going to use Guard Dragon from Grave to bring back the Vanilla next to the Eeb, and then that turns into an Emduk. I started talking about the other playline where you have another monster in your hand. And it started jumbled. It started jumbling up my own thought processes for this video. So sorry about that. But so what you end up here is you end up with a link to next to Firewall Dragon, and you end up with the Imduk over here. And what this has is we have the Waterfront with three counters on it because we put three cards in Grave. This searches the Gamma Seal before we draw off Ningirsu, and then we are going to link away into Ningirsu using the Nightmare Cerberus and the Imduk in this case, summoning the Ningirsu here. And then we're going to form our chains. So Ningirsu mandatory triggers its draw effect as chain link one. We're going to chain Imduk and Firewall Dragon special summon effects. So Firewall as one and Imduk as two. It'll be chain link two and chain link three on the Imduk. Imduk will special summon the World Legacy World Chalice from our hand here. Firewall will special summon the Gamma Seal here. And we've drawn two cards. Now we're not done. We're going to go about the same business we did in the previous combo sequence of the World Legacy World Chalice combo sequence of putting Firewall back on the board as a live option. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Lee's Grave effect because we haven't used it yet. We're going to send Firewall to Grave to add Lee back to our hand. And now at this point, I mean, Herald of the Orange Light is live <laughs> if you wanted to keep it that way. But we're going to make it better. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Orem with the Eeb and the World Legacy World Chalice on the field. Orem into, I guess, this zone. It doesn't matter what zone you put it in. You can put it over here if you want to. Um, but so now the Eeb's effect is going to trigger to special this Lee out of my hand into any of Orm's zones. And then you're going to use Orm's effect, tributing the Lee, to revive Firewall Dragon. And so now this Firewall Dragon is live. You could keep it that way, or you could do the other option, which is what I prefer to do, which is to just go ahead and burn its effect and just put Eva from your graveyard into your hand. So what that does is that means you have Herald of Orange Light plus Eva 
which means that if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can discard with Herald of Orange Light, you can discard the Eva, you've got plenty of fairies in Grave to banish two for Eva, you've got the Shine Ball left over, and you still have a Lee in Grave. This would also count towards the fairies in Grave, so you have three fairies of which you can banish, uh, just as like just the base minimum number, just performing only this combo to a T. And then you get to search another Herald of Warns Light and another Lee to your hand to have another Herald of Warns Light on your opponent's turn. Gamma Seal is out. There's five counters on Waterfront. The Firewall Dragon is not live, but these are still on the board applying pressure, specifically Ningirsu as well, specifically because this, uh, this Brilliant Fusion is still just here. I keep wanting to call it Gym Knight Fusion. This Brilliant Fusion is here, meaning that it's just a free card to be you know sent away with Ningirsu. So like that's a really good interaction. There's a few different things that are just good interactions about this uh, about this sort of play. Now, like I said, you can make this a draw three play with any other monster in your hand because there's multiple points where we did not trigger Firewall Dragon's effect to special from hand. You could do that, change things around in terms of what you're adding back off Firewall or what you're using your Guard Dragon for and when, and then you have the ability to make it an Ingirsu draw three. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that make this really cool. I really like the fact that this deck can access like Waterfront in a very pinpoint fashion now because like it makes it more reliable and this has been literally the day one boss monster of this deck because all you do is like in all of the decks various versions up until recently with Gumblar has been try to get to waterfront whether it was with Saryuja's or whatever but so this is a very interesting like take on the deck and I personally really really enjoy it but so uh, the reasoning behind doing this is again because danger dark worlds are in the format you do not want to be Gumblaring a Dark World deck. And another reason is like, Thund Gumblar's not even that strong against like, uh, Thunder Dragons specifically. Like, you can just get got in that matchup and you don't really want to open yourself up to that. If you do the regular play that we were doing previously of making Gumblar for four plus a live Trigate Wizard, something along those lines, your opponent still has like the capability of opening one of their like two to three Thunder Dragon fusions, uh, which they can just get discard and then banish it and search for any monster to offset what you Gumblar discarded. Uh, you're using, like, they can use a monster out of their hand to bait your Trigate Wizard and then just, like, go on with something else like Hawk or Roar or whatever. It's not really that well suited against Thunder Dragon. And then also, your opponent could literally just, like, discard a Light and a Dark and special, like, one of their three BLSs and attack over your Trigate Wizard and then play the rest of their turn with, like, their one Thunder Dragon in hand. Or whatever they banished for the BLS in Grave could have had been effects that were triggering, like, Roar and Hawk and stuff like that, or um, Dark, I think, is the one that's the searcher. Like, there's a bunch of different things that go into that being a problem to go get and do Gumblar in that matchup as well. It was just something that wasn't really doing that much. Like, depending on the a variant your opponent was playing, the Gumblar plus Trigate board doesn't really do a whole much. But, like, this can absolutely cripple plays by itself because stuff's not hitting their graveyard, you're negating the cards they're activating, all that sort of stuff. So this is the kind of way I think the deck sort of is evolving for the future. It's a weird evolution, but I mean, hey, whatever. As long as the deck keeps changing, it'll continue to be interesting. Even if it is taking a step back, it is taking a step forward because of Summon Sorceress into this little guy. But so, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, uh, this combo is very uh, kind of insane and interesting because like you end on so many cards off two. We ended on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that... Can I count? This is five on the board, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, like, casual pluses, but anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, as always. Thanks for watching. Uh, all that sort of nonsense. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more stuff like this. Check out the channel if you want to find more combo tutorials from this deck and various other decks like Mermails and Gym Knights and stuff like that. But other than that, that's pretty much all I have to say about this sort of nonsense. Check out the link in the description to my Twitch page, as well as the channel's Discord server if you want to chat with me and some others. The Discord server may be of your liking. The stream link, as well, is something you want to go follow because I live stream pretty regularly, or at least I'm about to start doing super regular streams. So if you're interested, check those out. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.